Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's crucial for everyone to know about botulism. It might sound a bit intimidating, but don't worry, we're here to break it down for you. What is botulism? Botulism is a rare but serious illness which is mostly caused by consuming processed canned food which may be contaminated by a toxin produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. As the toxin can contaminate improperly processed foods, leading to symptoms such as muscle weakness, paralysis, difficulty swallowing, and even respiratory failure and requires prompt medical attention. History of Botulism Early Observations In the 1700s, cases resembling botulism were described in Germany and Italy, linked to spoiled sausages. However, the underlying causes and mechanisms remained unknown. Discovery of Clostridium botulinum in the late 19th century, Dr. Emil van Ermingham identified the bacterium Clostridium botulinum as the source of botulism during an outbreak in Belgium. He isolated the bacterium from contaminated ham. Toxin Identification In the 1920s, scientists discovered that the symptoms of botulism were caused by a potent toxin produced by the bacterium and named it botulinum toxin. Medical Applications By the mid-20th century, botulinum toxin was recognized for its therapeutic potential, leading to the development of medical uses like treating muscle disorders, migraines, and even cosmetic procedures. Bioterrorism Concerns In recent years, botulinum toxin's potential as a bioterrorism agent has been a concern due to its potency and ability to cause mass casualties if misused. About Causal Agent of Botulism Shape and Structure Clostridium botulinum is a rod-shaped bacterium, typically appearing as a straight or slightly curved rod under a microscope. It is gram-positive and modal by paradicate flagella. Spore formation. One of the distinctive features of Clostridium botulinum is its ability to form highly resistant spores. These spores are dormant, tough structures that enable the bacterium to survive in adverse conditions. Anaerobic nature. Clostridium botulinum is an obligate anaerobe, which means it thrives in environments with little to no oxygen. This anaerobic nature is crucial for its survival and growth in environments like improperly canned or preserved foods. Toxin Production The bacterium produces one of the most potent toxins known botulinum toxin. This toxin is responsible for the symptoms of botulism when consumed in contaminated food. Habitat and Growth Clostridium botulinum can be found in various environments, including soil, aquatic sediments, and the intestines of animals. Variants and Subtypes there are several distinct strains and subtypes of Clostridium botulinum, each capable of producing different types of botulinum toxin, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. What are different types of botulism? Foodborne botulism. This is the most common type of botulism and is caused by consuming food contaminated with botulinum toxin. The toxin is produced by Clostridium botulinum bacteria that have grown in improperly canned or preserved foods. Common sources of foodborne botulism are improperly processed or home canned low acid foods, such as vegetables, meats, and fish. Infant botulism. Infant botulism occurs when infants ingest spores of Clostridium botulinum, which then grow and produce toxin in the baby's intestines. Honey is a common source of spores for infant botulism. It's recommended not to feed honey to infants under one year old. Wound botulism. Wound botulism results from a wound becoming infected with Clostridium botulinum bacteria. The bacteria produce toxin in the wound, which can then enter the bloodstream and cause symptoms. Adult Intestinal Colonization Botulism This type is similar to infant botulism but occurs in adults. It happens when the bacteria grow and produce toxin in the intestines due to colonization, often in people with underlying health issues or compromised immune systems. Inhalational Botulism Potential Bioterrorism Inhalational botulism is caused by inhaling aerosolized botulinum toxin. It's considered a potential bioterrorism threat due to its rapid onset and potential for mass casualties. Iatrogenic botulism. This rare type is caused by accidental overdose of botulinum toxin used for medical or cosmetic purposes. What is mode of action of botulinum toxin? The mechanism of botulism toxin involves a series of steps that ultimately disrupt the communication between nerve cells and muscles, leading to muscle paralysis. Entry and uptake. When botulinum toxin is ingested, inhaled, or enters the body through a wound, it gets absorbed and reaches nerve endings. Binding to nerve terminals. The toxin has a specific affinity for nerve terminals at neuromuscular junctions, where nerves communicate with muscles. It binds to these nerve endings. Internalization. Once bound, the toxin is internalized by the nerve cell through endocytosis. This brings the toxin into the nerve cell's interior. Blockade of neurotransmitter release. Generally at neuromuscular junction, neurotransmitter acetylcholine is released and binds to receptor sites which is essential for nerve cell to trigger muscle contraction. But botulinum toxin blocked the release of acetylcholine, hence no muscle contractions. 
Muscle paralysis. With acetylcholine release blocked, nerve signals can't communicate effectively with muscles. As a result, the muscles don't receive the signal to contract, leading to muscle paralysis and weakness. Onset of symptoms. As the paralysis progresses, the affected individual experiences symptoms such as blurred vision, difficulty swallowing, slurred speech, and muscle weakness. Severe cases can lead to paralysis of muscles used for breathing, which can be life-threatening. Recovery and regeneration. Over time, the body can regenerate the necessary proteins and recover from the effects of the toxin. What are the symptoms of botulinum toxin? Symptoms usually appear within 12 to 72 hours after exposure to the toxin, but this timeline can vary. Muscle weakness. Muscle weakness is a hallmark symptom of botulism. It often starts with weakness in the muscles of the face, leading to drooping eyelids, difficulty focusing, and facial expressions appearing, mask-like. Blurred or double vision. Botulism can affect the muscles responsible for eye movement, causing blurred or double vision. This symptom is particularly noticeable when trying to focus on objects. Difficulty swallowing. Trouble swallowing, dysphagia, is a common symptom. It can lead to difficulty in eating and drinking and, in severe cases, may result in aspiration of food or liquids into the airways. Slurred speech. The muscles controlling speech can be affected, resulting in slurred speech and difficulty forming words clearly. Dry mouth and dry eyes. Reduced control over muscles can lead to dryness in the mouth and eyes. Muscle paralysis. As the condition progresses, muscle paralysis can extend to other parts of the body, potentially affecting limb muscles and the muscles used for breathing. Breathing difficulties. In severe cases, botulism toxin can lead to paralysis of the muscles used for breathing, which can result in respiratory distress and potentially respiratory failure. Weakness and fatigue. Generalized muscle weakness and fatigue are common as the paralysis spreads. Constipation. In cases of infant botulism, constipation is often an early symptom. Poor feeding. Infant botulism. Infants with botulism may experience difficulty feeding due to weak muscles. Wound issues. Wound botulism. Wound botulism may present with symptoms related to the infected wound, such as pain, swelling, and redness, in addition to typical botulism symptoms. Botulism can be a life-threatening condition, especially when it affects the muscles involved in breathing. Immediate medical attention is crucial if botulism is suspected. How to diagnose botulism. Early diagnosis and treatment can significantly improve the outcome and prevent complications. Clinical evaluation. The doctor will start by assessing the patient's medical history, symptoms, and potential exposure to botulinum toxin. Clinical signs, such as muscle weakness, paralysis, blurred vision, and difficulty swallowing, can strongly indicate botulism. Physical examination. A thorough physical examination will be conducted to evaluate muscle strength, reflexes, and neurological symptoms. Stool or gastric content analysis. In cases of foodborne and infant botulism, testing the patient's stool or gastric contents can help detect the presence of botulinum toxin or spores. Blood tests. Blood samples may be tested for the presence of botulinum toxin or antibodies against the toxin. Culture and toxin testing. Culturing samples from suspected contaminated foods, wounds, or other potential sources can help identify the bacterium Clostridium botulinum and confirm the presence of toxin. Electromyography, EMG, EMG is a test that measures the electrical activity of muscles and nerves. It can help evaluate the extent of muscle weakness and paralysis caused by botulinum toxin. Nerve conduction studies, nerve conduction studies assess how well nerves can send electrical signals to muscles. What is treatment for botulism? Prompt medical attention is crucial to prevent the progression of symptoms and potential complications. Botulism antitoxin. Botulism antitoxin is a specialized medication that contains antibodies against the botulinum toxin. It can help neutralize the toxin in the bloodstream and prevent further binding of toxin to nerve endings. Supportive care. Supportive care is essential to manage the symptoms and complications of botulinum intoxication which include breathing support, intravenous fluids and nutritional support. Medical monitoring. Patients with botulinum intoxication often require close medical monitoring to assess their condition and adjust treatment as needed. Wound management. Wound botulism. For cases of wound botulism, wound care and infection management are crucial to prevent further bacterial growth and toxin production. Rehabilitation. After the acute phase of botulinum intoxication, individuals may require rehabilitation to regain muscle strength and function. How to prevent botulism. Preventing botulism involves practicing proper food handling, preparation, and storage techniques to minimize the risk of bacterial growth and toxin production. Here are important steps to prevent botulism. Safe canning and preservation. When canning foods at home, follow approved canning guidelines and recipes to ensure proper processing times and temperatures. Inspect canned goods. 
Before consuming any canned goods, inspect the cans for any signs of damage, bulging, leaks, or unusual smells. Use clean equipment. When canning or preserving, use clean and sanitized utensils, jars, and equipment to prevent contamination. Proper refrigeration. Refrigerate perishable foods promptly to prevent the growth of harmful bacteria, including Clostridium botulinum. Avoid consuming bulging cans. Do not consume canned goods that are bulging, leaking, or have damaged seals, as these signs could indicate bacterial growth and toxin production. Avoid giving honey to infants. Refrain from feeding honey to infants under one year old, as honey can contain botulinum spores that pose a risk of infant botulism. Thoroughly cook foods. Cook foods thoroughly to appropriate temperatures to destroy any potential bacterial contaminants, including Clostridium botulinum. Practice good hygiene. Wash hands, utensils, and surfaces regularly when handling and preparing food to prevent cross-contamination. Store foods properly. Store foods in airtight containers to prevent contamination and spoilage. Refrigerate leftovers promptly. Avoid home canning of high-risk foods. Home canning low-acid foods like meats, poultry, and vegetables requires specific techniques and precautions. If you're not experienced, it's best to avoid home canning these foods. Educate yourself. Familiarize yourself with safe food preservation methods and guidelines from reputable sources like local food safety agencies. Conclusion. So, there you have it a crash course on botulism. Remember, knowledge is power. By understanding how this illness works and how to prevent it, you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more informative content. Stay safe, and until next time, take care.